Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Just let me go over the uh, format. First of all, let me ask you to please uh, silence your cell phones in the room, please, if you would at this time, so we won't have any disturbances during the uh, media session. Uh, the format, uh, we'll have President Tate start us out today, then uh, Athletics Director Scott Woodward will be up, and he will introduce our new coach. We'll have a brief photo opportunity before Coach uh, makes his opening remarks. When we go to questions, please give your name and affiliation. Let's try to uh, keep it as concise as possible so that we can get to as many people as possible in the time we have. Cameras ready? All right. Would you please welcome LSU President William Tate. Good afternoon, and thank you for being here. It's a great day for LSU basketball, LSU athletics, and for the entire LSU community. One of the important tasks in leadership, whether you're university president, athletic director, or head basketball coach, is finding what I call transformative talent. Transformative talent is hard to find, and once you find it, it's even hard to land, harder to land. That's because people who possess exceptional qualities and characteristics, no matter what their roles and responsibilities are, can ignite change in entire institutions. In a word, they're impactful. After going through the process with Scott and after getting to spend some time with our coach, I have no doubts that we have a transformative talent in our new men's basketball coach. If you don't believe me, just listen to the words of his former boss. The Murray State Athletic Director put out a statement on Monday after announcing that Coach McMahon was being hired by LSU. In that statement, he talked about Coach's tireless work ethic, genuine care for people, and authentic leadership. He talked about his comprehensive commitment to excellence and the tremendous joy and pride he finds fostered for Murray State fans. He finished by saying that the McMahon family will forever be cherished members of the Racer family and wish them the same unprecedented success on that journey ahead. In a word, his former boss described him as impactful, transformative, with more than 150 four career victories, more lottery picks um, that he's developed. Uh, and, and I just want to stop right there. I got to tell you, Coach, um, I watched you, you know, and what you did with that lottery pick. And I'm going to say this off the record. We had a chance to get that guy in South Carolina. You identified him. You understand transformative folk. We expect here that Coach McMahon is not only the man for this job, he's the man to impact our institution and our basketball program in positive ways and make a difference for the entire state of Louisiana. I want to welcome Coach McMahon, Mary, and your entire family to LSU. And I want to say one other thing to you, Coach. You know I'm from Chicago. The last McMahon I rooted for got me a Super Bowl. My expectations are very high for the McMahon family. And I look forward to helping you and supporting you in any way I can. I want to turn it now to Scott Woodard. Again, welcome and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm excited to introduce our new men's basketball head coach, Matt McMahon. But before I do that, I do want to thank a few people who have been important throughout this entire process. First, I want to thank President Tate for his leadership and for his vision for this entire university. It's unprecedented. And uh, to steal his line and to be redundant, it is transformative. Uh, and what I've seen in his brief seven months here have been phenomenal. And uh, I've been very lucky to be at some very special places. And uh, 
uh, President Tate is as good as there is, and uh, we're lucky to have him here, and I'm lucky to call him a partner uh, and a friend. I uh, also want to thank our chairman of the Board of Supervisors, Remy Starnes, and the entire board for their unwavering support of LSU athletics and our student athletes. On my staff, I want to acknowledge Stephanie Remp and Verge Osbury, who are instrumental in our ability to go hire the very best young coach in the country. And finally, I want to express my sincere gratitude to Kevin Nickelberry for the leadership he displayed during a difficult time as our interim head coach. When we began this search, we were very intentional and specific about the characteristics and qualities we wanted in our next head basketball coach. We wanted a program builder, someone who developed not just elite basketball players, but elite student athletes. We wanted a winner, someone who had sustained success over multiple seasons in a competitive conference. Most importantly, we wanted a leader, a man of character who shared our vision and our values as an institution. From the start, we were committed to those criteria, and we promised to take as long as necessary to find the right man for the job. Fortunately for us, it didn't take long. And when you find a coach like Matt McMahon, you don't hesitate. In seven years as head coach, Matt has established a winning standard of performance based on values and standards. In his last five seasons, he's won four conference championships, three conference tournaments, and two NCAA tournament games. He's recruited hidden gems, as President Tate mentioned, and he's developed them into lottery picks. He's climbed ladders and he's cut down nets. He's won championships and he's transformed lives. That is why McMahon has done for his entire career. And that is what he is here to do at LSU. So without any further ado, allow me to introduce the 25th head coach of the LSU men's basketball program, Matt McMahon. Good afternoon. Uh, this is truly an incredibly special and a historic day for me and my family. This is an unbelievable honor uh, to have the privilege to stand here today as the head basketball coach at LSU. I'd like to, I have a long list of thank yous. We'd be here for, for hours if I named everybody, but I'd love to start uh, with President Tate. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your kind words, and I look forward to seeing you on the court. Uh, to Remy Storns, call us Temple and the LSU Board of Supervisors. Thank you for this opportunity. Scott Woodward and Stephanie Rimp have been terrific through this process, and I'm very thankful to them. And then I would love to introduce my family. My wife, Mary, is here. She's the best player in the family, had a great career at Furman. Our oldest daughter, Maris, our son, Mason, and our youngest daughter, Mabry, and they are all in. They will love being a part of the LSU community and can't wait to get started. Uh, what I loved about this opportunity uh, was the chance to win at the highest level, to compete for championships, uh, to be a part of a passionate fan base, uh, to be a part of this Baton Rouge community, and to be out front in the entire state of Louisiana. Uh, for me, as we get started, I can't wait to build relationships with our players. Uh, always believe that. You win in life with people. We're going to have high character people in our organization. We always start with the culture. And culture is the most overused word in sports. 
People just throw it around and have no idea what it means. Our culture will be clearly defined. Uh, we will lead through simplicity, clarity, and intentionality in everything we do. And I look forward to establishing that from day one. I think that culture precedes positive results. The culture precedes championships. It all begins with culture, and we'll fight for that every day. Uh, there's, a, there's a quote, Eric Thomas, a great speaker. He said, you have to take advantage of the opportunity of a lifetime within the lifetime of the opportunity. And I certainly plan to do that here at LSU. We'll get to work right away. Uh, we believe in outworking the competition. Those core values for us, hard work, unselfishness, toughness, accountability, and joy. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me. I'm going to have the time of my life having the privilege to lead the Tiger basketball program. I can't wait to build relationships with our players, to recruit elite coaches here, to be a part of our staff, and my family and I cannot get, wait to be a part of this campus and Baton Rouge community. Uh, with that said, I'm ready to get to work. There's a lot to be done, and I'm in it for the long haul. And we're going to get to work right away and building a championship program in everything that we do on and off the basketball court and in this great community here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So I'd love to take any questions and get rolling. Uh, Matt Sheldon Mickles, uh, advocate in Baton Rouge. How you doing? Doing great, Sheldon. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, a lot of people thought this might be a tough, you know, job to sell to somebody because of possible sanctions and whatnot. How big of that was a hurdle for you, and how much did you have to think about it? And, and maybe part two of uh, how tough could it be to get transfer portal people in here because of the uh, possible sanctions? This is LSU one of the great brands in all the sports. This is the SEC. Uh, we've built a program with elite players, and we're going to continue to do that here at LSU. I'm excited to move the program forward, and we're going to build it with great players, great people, on, and everyone in our organization. And so no concerns there at all. I'm excited about this opportunity of a lifetime, and we're ready to roll. Yeah, Ron Higgins, Tiger Details. Your staff, I know it's been a whirlwind for you the past few days. Will your staff be a mixture of, of, of current staff members and maybe some LSU staff members, or have you just been besieged with e texts and emails from people trying to get in? Oh, we definitely have been besieged with texts and emails. You know, everybody wants to come to LSU. As I said, it's one of the great places in, in all of college sports. So uh, I'm going to put together the best staff. Uh, that not necessarily because of the name on where the front of their jersey was. I'm going to get transformative people on my staff who are going to impact our young people. I, I know, you know, every coach comes to these press conferences and says, we're going to win national champ, we're going to win. We're going to... Everyone wants to win. It's about the processes of how you go about doing that on a daily basis. And so I'm going to have great people in our organization who are going to invest in our players and help them maximize their opportunities here at LSU to get a world-class education, to play in the best league in America, and to compete at the very highest level. We've developed pros in the NBA, the G League, the Euro League uh, for many years, and we're going to recruit the very best here at LSU. So back to the staff, it'll be a mixture of everything. Hey, Coach McMahon, uh, Glenn West, with LSU Country. Nice to meet you. Um, I guess kind of just have you had a chance to talk with any of the new, uh, any of the players on the current roster and just what are some of the boxes you want to get ticked here in the first several weeks of your uh, tenure here? That's the most important thing here. We've hit the ground running. You know, we've hit the ground running. We're going to invest a lot of time with our players. I want people who want to be here. I want people who want to be a part of something special because that's what we're going to build here. Uh, we're going to do things the right way. We're going to make sure we're developing young men, not only on the court. I know everyone wants to play in the NBA. But the average career is three and a half years. So it's going to be an all-encompassing program. Uh, my favorite part of the job is, is seeing players not only become the best player they can be, but the best man they can be. It's my responsibility to grow leaders here at LSU, and that's what we're going to work to do. The results, the winning, all that will take care of itself because of the daily processes 
excuse me, daily processes will will maintain. Hey, Matt, right up the middle here. Uh, Michael Cobble from Channel 2. Good to see you again. This, you talked about the culture, but what, are something, what is something that you hang your hat on in your coaching tenure? What is something that you like your teams to represent when they're out on the court? Joy. Joy. I mean, what? Most, every kid who gets here, every young man who gets here has worked their entire life to have the opportunity to play at LSU, to put on that jersey, to play in Pete Maravich's house, you know, to walk past Shaq's statue uh, going into the arena. Now, I believe I was 12 years old, and I saw Chris Jackson play in Knoxville, score, uh, I believe it was 49. I mean, it, this is an unbelievable place. Why wouldn't you enjoy it? Yeah, we're going to work, but there's, you have to have that balance. We're going to have high-energy people. I want players who want to be the best they can be. I want players who are going to be all about winning. But we're going to have a lot of fun along the way in doing so. And I think that starts with building relationships, not only with the players, but their families. Uh, really enjoy that part of the, the job. Some of the best people I've met in my entire life, and in, in my entire life have been my players' families. And so I'm excited to get started on that right away. Hey, Coach Jacques Doucet, WAFB-TV here in Baton Rouge. I, I saw you took your team to Auburn this year, played a competitive game there. Uh, I'm sure you'll talk about basketball as basketball, but what are the challenges of the league, the Southeastern Conference, and how much they've improved in recent years? Well, I think you look at the elite coaches in the league, uh, great historic programs in the league, uh, and you've had some people who have gone into places like Auburn and have generated a lot of excitement. Uh, and that's what I'm fired up to be here for. We have a passionate fan base for the state school. People of Louisiana take great pride in LSU. And so I'm excited to get out in the community, get out across the state, and continue to build upon that passionate fan base. Yeah. Right here in front, Brett Martell, Associated Press. Um, so it sounded like you said the specter of Sanctions didn't concern you at all, but um, does that mean that, you know, I mean, a lot of coaches are concerned about their legacy, their career win-loss record, and so forth, and it, it can be an ha a hamstringing thing in the early years. Did you think about that or the, the plan to deal with that, or is that something you'll think about when you need to? I couldn't tell you anything about my career record. Uh, those, that's, that's not why I coach. Uh, I'm thankful it's led me to this unbelievable place here today, uh, but I coach to make an impact on people. Uh, to have the opportunity to be in great communities, to be of service to young people. And that's what I'm going to continue to do, and we'll do a lot of winning along the way. Hey, Coach. Jamarcus Fitzpatrick with KATC and Lafayette. Um, you talked about, obviously, recruiting guys to come here to the program, but how important is it to kind of re-recruit some of the guys that are already here and make sure that that talent that they have here stays? Oh, it's top priority hit the ground running from the second I got the job. So uh, I think that's very important. It's all about getting the right people on the bus, and we're going to work to establish those relationships. I don't expect someone to walk in and shake my hand in 30 seconds and have trust established, but we're going to work to do that. I'm going to lay out a vision for how we're going to run our program and how it's going to benefit these young men on and off the basketball court. I have great confidence in that. So – I want people who want to be here. I don't know why you wouldn't want to be here. And that's how we're going to build it. So I think that's a critical piece. Roster management, who you hire on your coaching staff are, are my two biggest priorities, with number three being, and I've already gotten to do a lot of this, meeting great people here, meeting great people who really care about LSU and want to see LSU be successful. And I want to be a part of that. Hey, Matt, uh, Scott Rapolet from The Advocate. I, don't, I know you've been busy. I don't know if you had a chance to see the comments with DJ Burns in the paper. He, just, he was happy for you. What, how, how gratified are you to, to have you know, your, your players at Murray State saying that they were happy for you with this opportunity? I didn't get to see the article. Uh, it was a privilege to coach DJ. Uh, I was going to save my thank yous there to Murray State for later. Um, so I don't break down because we had some special, special people there. I spent 11 years there. You know, and that's, uh, that became home for me and my family. And the players we recruited and coached there are family forever for me. Uh, 
those are those are guys that will be a part of my life for the remainder of my life and their families is the exact same way uh, so it means a lot I haven't had a chance to scan the social media but I've had multiple people tell me that former players uh, staff members uh, members of the Murray community the Murray State campus have been very kind in their words and uh, that means the world to me because that's that's why I do this is hopefully to have a positive impact on people so uh, I'll check out the article uh, he's a character too so I'll be interested to see what he had to say hey coach this is uh, Dylan Sanders from the Reveille here on campus uh, I saw you walking into the PMAC on Monday what was your first impression of the fans here oh it was loud it was loud and the student section looked awesome uh, fans were incredibly generous to me uh, coming up taking pictures and and all that so we're excited I mean uh, the PMAC LSU uh, the SEC I'm, I'm very honored and grateful to be here hey, coach Cookie Riley from the Daily Advertiser I was curious do you have a certain um, philosophy or, or style that you think is conducive to winning basketball games yes very detailed uh, so I'll give you the overview. I believe in balance. We were one of three teams in the country this year that ranked top 20 in offensive and defensive efficiency. I think you have to play both ends of the floor. Uh, but style of play is incredibly important. We're going to play an up-tempo style, but we're going to be efficient with it offensively. We're going to be aggressive and physical and tough on the defensive end of the floor. And we're going to play, play a style that enables elite players to come here and develop into NBA players. Uh, I always laugh sometimes people say they want to be a pro and then they'll go to a school where they walk the ball up the court and try to win games 48 to 46. That's not very conducive to the NBA. Uh, so we have a aligned player development system uh, that we operate with on a daily basis to help players max out individually on and off the court and prepare themselves not only to get those NBA and professional opportunities, but to go there and be very successful. And I think you've seen that with guys like John Morant, Cameron Payne, and I could continue on down the line. Coach Michael again. I imagine the transfer portal will be key uh, in many ways in Baton Rouge going forward. How, what has been your experience with the portal? How do you like to attack it, use it, et cetera? Yeah, I think whether you like it or not, the transfer portal is here to stay. So you better embrace it and use it to the best of your ability and that's what we've done for example this year at Murray State our top six players three were foundational pieces who had been a part of our program for a long time the other three were first year transfers into the program and my favorite part of the job besides seeing players max out individually and become the best men they can be is building a team a team is once again a very overused word in sports Oftentimes, it's just a, collect a collection of individuals. You know, a, a true team is a collection of people who are united together, connected as one in pursuit of the same dreams and, and goals. And I enjoy that part of it. I think it takes a lot of time, investment. Uh, but I'll have an unbelievable staff here uh, to help me get that done. And we're going to enjoy it. And that's the one thing I would say to recruits. If you want, if you want to play at the highest level, you want to have your skills develop to the absolute fullest so you have professional opportunities you want to win and you want to be around great people who are going to invest in you you won't find a better place in america i was going to ask you earlier who was the better player you or mary but you cleared that up kind of early <laughs> um in college were you more of a defensive player and, and also um when you go to recruit now guards especially uh how much does the john morant kind of help you a little bit i know Obviously, you're a good recruiter, but uh, how much does that do, – do players' eyes get a little wider or something like that? Because I know you had two good ones this year. No, thank you. Uh, number one, I was a very average player, uh, but, I, but I wanted to win, and I wanted to do whatever I could do to help the team win. And so I was very fortunate to get to play in the NCAA tournament uh, as a small piece uh, of, that, of that team. Uh, but I, I do think, you know, in today's world – you know, John Morant's one of the five best players in the world. He's the most electrifying and entertaining player in the world. And so I think that only helps 
from a program identity standpoint and a brand. Uh, we got labeled at Murray State Point Guard University for all the elite point guards that we've had come through there over the years. Uh, but this past year, our shooting guard, Tevin Brown, is the all-time leading three-point shooter in the history of the league. And he's gonna, he went over 1,900 points, 400 assists. He's top 10 in every category that matters at Murray State. Our 6'10", 245-pound big man, K.J. Williams, was the player of the year in the league. You know, came, into it, came to us from Cleveland, Mississippi. Worked, worked like crazy. We invested a lot of time to grow and develop his skills. And now he's poised to make a great living playing this game for a lot of years. Uh, so it's not just about the point guard play. Uh, we believe in balance. We believe in balance at every position. Uh, do you remember when you first heard the name John ja Morant and, and how you got to recruit him and then, then sign him if you could? It's amazing that, you know, he was, he was so unknown early on. Well, he was young. Uh, John was a young senior. But some, sometimes uh, people forget he played on an AAU team with Nick Claxton, who was a first-round NBA draft pick. So it wasn't like he wasn't seen. Uh, I think when, you, when I saw him first, uh, you saw right away, uh, obviously, the physical tools. But then when you get to know people, and you can then judge the heart, the toughness, uh, the competitiveness, uh, will to win, uh, his ability to impact and make the people around him better. Uh, you got you to be thorough there. You know, anybody can walk in the gym and see who can dunk and who can shoot. Uh, and that's how a lot of those stars get assigned in the recruiting rankings. But you have to have a very thorough and detailed evaluation process for what you're looking for in your program to find special people like that. We'll look to continue and do that here at LSU. Charles Sandergriff, ESPN Radio. Coach, given that there is going to be some time before there's resolution to the case, are you approaching your first season in anticipation that there'll be some restrictions? And if so, how will that affect your preparation? I haven't even looked that far down the road. We're just here to get to work, build relationships with our players, we get back in the gym starting on Monday, and we're going to start establishing the culture of what LSU basketball is going to be moving forward. I don't ever go into a season with goals of, hey, we're going to win this many games or that many games. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to work. We're going to do things the right way. We're going to build the program the way I want to build it, and that's how it's going to go. I think that will lead to a lot of winning. And we're going to invest in our community. We're going to invest in the state of Louisiana. And LSU basketball is going to be one of the great brands in all of college basketball. Okay. Uh, Coach, the other night you said you were familiar with Collis from the AAU circuits. And just how familiar are you with Louisiana basketball and, and you know, kind of the state in general? Well, obviously very aware of the success Louisiana players had on the LSU Final Four team. And it's an area, area we've always recruited. I got lucky when my college career ended, the third assistant spot in college basketball made $12,000, and they couldn't recruit. So not many people took those jobs. So I got to get right into it at age 22 as an assistant coach. So for the last 22 years, you know, we've recruited the South extremely hard, great relationships, and that's what it's all about. So I'm excited to get, it, get into the state of Louisiana, meet all the high school coaches, spend time with the AAU coaches those that we already have relationships established with, and, and certainly meet new people as well. Uh, but it, this is the state school, so we're going to be everywhere in Louisiana in the recruiting. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Go Tigers.